where it probably didn't work well was that I didn't have the investment and the um, network of people to really. So if it was going to be a success, I'd probably have to spend a lot on the website development side of it. And I wasn't willing to, at that point, risk that or I didn't have necessarily the, the funds to do it. And you don't always have the money or the investment when you first start out on your business. And you've then got to make a decision whether you continue with it or not. And in this case, David decided not to continue with it. And that's a really wise decision because he didn't go and get a loan or get money from somewhere on something he didn't know if it was going to work. So many years later then, which actually is happening right now, literally a few months before we recorded this conversation, he started his new business called Grand Central Digital, which is a fantastic name. This is a really young business story, but still a really important one for all of you out there. It's a super interesting discussion. Enjoy. Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Welcome to the Share Your Story podcast, David. How are you today? Hi, Michael. Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Yeah, how are you? I'm really brilliant. And thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. And just for our listeners, we'll, we'll just share how we met. We met, and I want to mention the guy's name anyway, because he's a good friend. So we met at a Fiverr a community kind of networking event in Birmingham, uh, hosted by the famous Michael Don Smith, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah, it was a really good event. I enjoyed it. And I learned about you and your business and how you're just kind of starting out this year. And and I said to you, come on my podcast, kind of very casually thinking, oh, no, he won't do it. But you took me up on it. So Yeah, of course. Yeah, and, no, it's, it's good. And I think it's a really good way, I think, to so people can hear about you, especially as you're starting out. And, and it's good because often I interview people that have been in business for a while, but I think it's sometimes really neat to to hear from people who are just starting to get their business going. And so I'd love to hear your story. So my yep. first question uh, that I start with, with everybody, is um, tell us a little bit about your personal life. So where were you born? A bit about your education. Have you moved around? Where do you now live? Um, and and then, you know, we'll move and transition into the career side of things. So over to you, David. Yeah, sounds good. Um, so I was born in Redditch, um, moved around the area um, to Ulster um, as I was growing up. Um, and then through university, um, I studied at Hull University, uh, business management. Um, and then I've moved about quite a bit through different jobs as well. So I've um, been down to London for a while. Um, I've lived in Derby and um, the last two or three years I've been living in Birmingham. Oh, cool. So where would you say your roots would be? Would they be kind of the West Midlands? Yeah, so um, the majority of my life, which I remember, um, has been in Ulster, um, so I grew up in Redditch when I was very young, mm. and then moved uh, to Ulster, which is near Stratford upon Avon, and um, yeah, just around that sort of area. Um, so, so that's yeah. Warwickshire then. Yeah, so Warwickshire is probably my main roots. Um, played f a lot of football when I was younger around that sort of area as well. So um, yeah, that's a good way to. Um, similar to kind of musicians and other people uh, playing football, you can see different places. So for our American listeners, we'll we'll talk about Shakespeare country then, won't we? Yeah, <laughs> because they'll they'll kind of go, oh yeah, Shakespeare. They'll they'll understand that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, Warwickshire is a fabulous county. Yeah, I lived in Warwickshire for a while as well, and I I love it there. Yeah, it's nice. I was back there last weekend, actually, and I think you you appreciate it more when you go back when you're younger, to kind of take it for granted. But, um, yeah, you really see the best parts of it when you've been away for a while. 
definitely. So do you still have family that live there? Yeah, so um, my parents live in Ulster, uh, which is, uh, again, where we grew up. Yeah. Um, then the rest of my family, to be honest, is now um, situated around Birmingham. So uh, it's worked out quite nicely, really, um, with me moving here. And then um, my nan's always been based around Birmingham. Um, and, yeah, just my brother's also around that sort of area now as well. Fa- fantastic. Fabulous. That's interesting. So did you say you went to university? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So what you said business that you did there? Yeah, I studied in business management. Um, It's I was similar to, I guess, a lot of people going into university where you're not really entirely sure what you want to do. Um, Mm. So I did quite a broad degree and I enjoyed the the business side of it but I, I don't think I really thought it was necessarily going to be where like a business manager or a um, business analyst was necessarily what I was going to do in the future so it's kind of quite a slow um, progression into marketing um, yes. through doing through yeah learning different things really and and so is it one of the the case is that you didn't really know what you were going to do uh, before you went to university. So you just took a general, you knew you were going to get into business or work, yeah. for, a, work for a company or something. So you kind of went, well, might as well do some business degree. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, was, I, did, I studied in business at A level. Okay. Um, and I did well in my first year my second year I didn't do so well mm. but um I I just always I've always been competitive and I've always had I think a bit of an entrepreneurial mindset of like, I've, I've enjoyed making money not necessarily having the money um but I I've always enjoyed the act of finding ways to make money so I think that's where it probably suited me being in business and did you do the act of making money in any other way when you were younger then? How did that how did um, you how did, did that come about? Well, I'd I think it was probably um my my nature, but um I I did various things in school, um so um I at one point I was making CDs and things like that for, for people. Um and I was always interested in other ways. Um, so I didn't necessarily have like a, a strict business when I was younger, which was making loads of money, but I was d- dabbling into it a bit. And um, then when I um, finished university quite soon after, um, I started my own business back then, actually. But um, probably looking back it was it was a good idea but looking back um, I, I probably didn't have the experience and the knowledge at, at that point mm. well that, that that goes the same for all of us who start our business you know we don't really yeah. have all the knowledge it's it's trial and error often isn't it that's the only way you're going to learn yeah definitely yeah and did did that did that appetite for entrepreneurship and looking at getting involved in doing some business stuff did that come from your family at all not really no so um my dad's a head teacher um my mum has did work but then when we all came along (laughs) she uh, had to she had well we've got i've got two brothers so Mm. it was a handful for her having to having to you know look after the three of us and my, they just decided to uh, that my dad was going to work and actually um it was there's not really many um that many entrepreneurial roots in my actual older family but then my brother's actually um started his own business about two years ago and he's done really well so far so i think that might be um another link and yes. i think having um brothers also made me competitive and like wanting to even from small things like um having 
food around the table you always want to have more than your brother to eat so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so yeah I can't say it was a natural sort of uh route and there's no one really who inspired me as such mm. of the um close to my family in that manner it was just um I think uh, hard work has always been in my family so my parents and um my grandparents kind of worked from nothing to make quite good money and be on and have successful careers I think it's just more hard work really and always thought I was an ideas person so um the two go together quite well wow it sounds really fascinating though but you know what inspired you to go that route and I guess yeah. the fact that you did business in A-levels that might have had something to do with it because you would be exposed to some of that plus then doing the degree especially yeah um, definitely I've okay so the, yeah sorry I was just gonna say I've always liked being um of the people that I've been involved with in business as well so the people on my course who did business studies I got on well with them um and then my first jobs in business I got on well with people so I think it's that's another thing if you kind of don't like the people you're working with it can put you off and think oh I don't want to do this because the people are, are horrible and don't want to do it yeah yeah that's that's I think the people do make it definitely yeah yeah definitely okay so did the university you said earlier on then you set up your own business straight after yeah and what was what was that about yeah I mean it was pretty soon after it was within about a year so um it was um uh, well the actual company which I called it was called my piggyback <laughs> okay. because um it was um uh idea of piggyback marketing which is quite it's 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 happening all the time now and it's been around the the term for a long time i'm aware but um at, it was kind of i started it up when social media wasn't quite as big as it is now so it was around four or five years ago yes and um there was i noticed that a lot of people who were uh, um had like-minded um businesses but they weren't necessarily selling the same things um that there was an opportunity for them to connect with each other and to kind of promote each other's content on um, on Twitter and Facebook. Yes. Um, so Instagram, I don't think, was really that much about by then. Mm. But, um, yeah, I, I set it up and um, I never really invested much in it other than my time. But, um, yeah, to, to give you an example of people listening, if they wanted to have a look, um, there's a website called Co-Promote, which does a similar service they're obviously very well established now but that was what I was hoping to achieve similar to that was to um, get people to share each of us content um, on social media and people with big followers to yes. um, kind of yeah spread their word and without having to pay um, it was like a mutual collaboration. So in, in effect I guess you would call that influencers in this day and age yeah it? yeah exactly um so it was like influencer marketing basically so you'd you'd team up with people who had similar amounts of social media profiles so maybe like uh, a sports shop and a sports events company who had two thousand followers on twitter mm. they would share each of us content yeah um, and then through through the website um and it would work like that okay and so were you just too early i think um it was a bit of that and um because of I've, I've actually got friends um i've got a friend in the usa who's um had a similar idea which he developed and it's he developed at a similar time and it worked really well yeah. i think um the where it probably didn't work well was that 
I didn't have the investment and the um, network of people to really. So if it was going to be a success, I'd probably have to spend a lot on the website development side of it. And I wasn't willing to, at that point, risk that or I didn't have necessarily the the funds to do it. Yes. Uh, But also, yeah, maybe as well that I didn't probably put go full into it like now with the work i'm doing it's it's my full-time job but i was kind of doing that just as um a side project yeah were you working for somebody else at the time yeah so it started off i was working part-time for a company um and then i was doing this the the other half of the week yeah and and whilst that company um, were they? What kind of business were they in? Uh, so it was a running events company. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they did sports events, um, mainly running events, but triathlons. Um, yeah. Okay. And then what happened next? I mean, how did it? How did you decide to stop doing it? What What made you decide? Right, I haven't got the amount of investment that I need. I'll just stop doing it. I think it just whittled out a bit. So, right. it, so it was, I, I was fighting a bit of a losing battle. I was doing things which you you probably look back on now and you think, well, it's, it's probably not the best strategy. So I was calling people up and trying to get people to sign up um, and it was maybe coming across a bit desperate and then I was kind of losing faith of it and – in the end, I just yeah thought I I yeah I, I, I had other options as well. So I was doing part time work. And I just mm. thought it's, it's I'm too possibly too inexperienced, and I haven't got you know the right money to go into it and other options. But um, yeah, no, it was, it was it was really useful. I think as a learning experience, um, and I think actually at that point I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Right. But um, I think marketing in the end, that helped me to learn that I wanted to do marketing. Right. Okay. Because it was, a, I guess, a way of marketing for people, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was um, social media marketing um, and influencer marketing, really, like you said. Yeah. Um, and I've, I always think that um, collaboration with people really works well like even this podcast now i think that it's it's great and it's a great idea because i think people are always interested in hearing about other people and um about um co-promoting and like there's almost a bit of a people want other people to to do well um yes. so that's that that was what i was hoping to achieve to the, the kind of power of two people working together is better than one. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it didn't necessarily work, but um, it's it was worth doing. <laughs> <laughs> interesting, really interesting. And then, so you were with this events company as well, part-time. You kind yeah. of... And, and how did things progress from there? Um, so that was a part-time job. Um, and when you finish uni and you um, apply for jobs in marketing, mm. um, it's it's really difficult to actually um, get something uh, secure because there's so many people going for each job. So um, I did find it difficult to get a job in marketing, which was full time and which was um, so I was living at my mum and dad's house at that point as well. Yes. Um, and uh, it took me about a year, a year and a half to actually find after um, a full-time job, which was you know, going to be um, an acceptable amount of money for me to live. Um, and it was, it was actually down in London uh, for my first job. So, um, yeah, it was, again, kind of took a bit of time for me to, to work out what I wanted to do. But, um, mm. yeah, over time I've just narrowed it down and think I'm, I've been happy the last two years with what I've been doing, really. Yeah. And so where did you end up after that 
18 months of searching? So I think where I there was a bit of a light bulb moment and I thought, you know, I'm not actually because you can get into the the path of thinking I'm not very good at this. And right. Should, should I should I be changing my my career path? Yes. Um, and it was when I was I moved to Derby, actually, um, and I'd gone from my job in London, which was. Uh, general marketing mm. um, to a digital marketing job um, for an agency. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, I was presenting my findings to clients and I was learning on the job again. So a lot of it was, I didn't know um, everything that I was doing necessarily, but um, it just seemed a lot more natural to me. I, was, I think I'm quite a technical and creative person. Yes. And I was getting good feedback almost straight away from clients um, and people saying this is really good to the point where I I actually uh, thought to myself, I, this is probably one of the first times I wasn't the best in school. So I was, it was, I was actually really proud because I thought, you know what, this is actually the first time where I've had such good feedback mm. about something. And that was kind of the light bulb moment where I thought, this, this is what I'm meant to be doing. So, uh, yeah, right. from there, kind of thought, yeah, I was, I'm supposed to be a digital marketer, so that's, that's what I do. Okay, so what the, the company in Derby, did, did you move with the job or were you, had you moved to Derby anyway? No, so I moved with the job. So this, I was living back at my parents' um, in Ulster. Yeah. And um, it was taking me initially about an hour and a half to get um, to Derby in the morning. So I was having to leave with the, the wonderful traffic uh, at that time. I was having to leave at about five in the morning. Wow. Um And, yes, yeah, so it was really early. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, coming back at about, uh, seven thirty or eight o'clock. Um, so it was a bit of a yeah. It was it was hard work to start with, and then I until because I couldn't find anywhere to live for a few weeks because it was an immediate start. Um, I, I decided to get an Airbnb, so I, I stayed um two or three weeks in Airbnb. Yes, and then luckily it was Christmas, so I had about two weeks where I could come back home and by that point I found a place to live in Derby um, yeah. and just move there and then from there yeah that's, that's where I've been most settled probably. Wow and and so you were getting as a digital you, you then decided in that job digital marketing that's really where where I feel most comfortable because of the feedback that you were getting from people you went yeah this is really what I'm meant to do yeah exactly yeah and then after that job what happened next so after that job um I well I was starting to look around um for other opportunities that's so this was about a year a year and a half after I'd been working there um and I saw a, a role in um in Birmingham which was for an insurance company and it was um it was a bit better pay and um it seemed like a good opportunity so for me to um it, that I think was also a good starting point for me um towards becoming um self employed because the job which I had um in Birmingham for, it was for an insurance company um so it was um so um so I was so self sufficient in the job whereby yeah. I'd be most of the time working uh, for myself. Um I did have a obviously yeah support from other people but um it was um learning on the job and um like a lot of the time managing myself. So I think yeah that helped as well and um it was a great learning experience. And what did you do there? So I was so my, my role in the the marketing agency where I worked at before was 
more doing work for separate clients so um google adverts and it was quite wide ranging so i could have had objectives to increase brand awareness or i could have just had jobs to get um more traffic to a website um there's there's varied jobs based and opportunities but in this uh, job for the insurance company it was very close to the sales process so it was generating leads yes uh, from people uh, who were interested in classic cars um motor trade um, and other uh, services that are similar so um, public liability um so job was to get leads from facebook advertising it was just when facebook advertising was coming out and um, so it was it was really good to learn that um such a new topic um and linkedin advertising and google um and all the seo so um the team that i worked with we've actually done a really good job of the um of the seo and of and worked with um people who wrote content as well and um with if you look on the website and um, there's there's so many different blogs and articles um so it was a lot of i didn't do so much the content writing but um it was a lot of um website reporting as well and the website was really important um and but it was just um as much as anything um i learned a lot about google analytics which i think is a great tool for marketers yes okay and then so how long were you how long did you do that for david yeah so that was october 2016 to uh pretty much exactly to the date in october 2018 right oh wow <laughs> yeah. i just thought after two years um that i was starting to probably learn a bit less and i was quite self-sufficient anyway so i just thought that I'd, it's a good opportunity for me to move on okay and to move on to do what <laughs> yeah so uh to start my own digital marketing company um called so i've called it grand central digital which is um, a great name i i, I love you. the name yeah I, I did um i was surprised when um i could get the domain for it so i kind of jumped at the opportunity mm, definitely yeah. and what so what i'm really really interested in now is that after doing that job for two years being really successful in doing it with yeah. them and with the team and you did it just for two years which is not a long time what was no. the catalyst for you deciding right that's it i'm going to start my own business what happened yeah i think it's so that inner desire that i've got always to do a bit better than what, than what i'm doing and um at the time i thought that i was working a lot for myself in the job and that I was i was quite passionate about the subject so about three or four months before i went on um some freelance sites i went on um fiverr i don't know if you've heard of it yes yes yeah, so i went on fiverr and um people that's how we out. met remember <laughs> of course yeah, yeah. sorry <laughs> from the my, me talking so much i uh i forgot about that that's okay yeah <laughs> um so yeah i went on um fiverr and um i started to make uh, an okay amount of money even within my first two months from fiverr so um I was getting quite excited about it really and um i was actually enjoying the work more potentially um f that i was doing on fiverr because you kind of saw the results more so i, I was getting good reviews back from that um and you saw the money coming in straight away so um yeah i thought you know what i really enjoy this and um it was i went on holiday to thailand in the summer uh, last august um and i was really considering um whether i should leave my job then but i thought oh, i probably shouldn't uh, just before i go on holiday no <laughs> so, but um yeah I was, I was a bit nervous and um, I, I saw I, I 
left my job in October. I was a bit nervous about the because I don't have loads of savings. Mm. Um, but I thought of I was confident with it really, and I just thought that it's the right time. Um, I don't have massive commitments, um, and and so I think it, I should just let you know my my passions and what what I think I'm good at. I should go for it. So that's that's why I decided to go for it. Yeah. Well, congratulations, and it's it's still such a Thank- young business. So what I'd I'd love to dig in a little bit. Um, just before we yeah. got on the podcast proper, we we did have a brief discussion that I would I'm going to challenge you a little bit in this next bit because yeah. yeah um you know there's a lot going on at the moment on the internet and particularly when it comes to advertising as well and Definitely. um it's I'm fascinated by the whole topic. Uh, I've always been interested in the internet from a you know, right from the onset. So, but let's begin uh, with explaining to the listeners what it is that you do. So what, as Grand Central Digital, your your new company that is yeah. brand new, what do you offer? So the main services um, we offer are Google advertising, um, content um, production, uh, so that's blogs and um, articles and content on the website. Um, offer Facebook and LinkedIn advertising um, and a, a range of other digital marketing services. Um, I mean, my strengths also lie in reporting, um, so I've got a lot of experience with Google Analytics and there's some amazing things that you can find from looking on there and having a look at um why people are coming to your website and what pages they're looking at. Um, it tells you so much. Um, so they're, they're really the key services that I offer. But, um, I mean, you know, digital marketing uh, company, so we can do other things as well. And how does it work? So, you know, there are lots of companies out there yeah. that are totally clueless about this part of digital marketing. Yeah. And you know, I mean, anybody can sign up for an advert, you know, an advertising account with Google, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. But they don't really know what to do with it. Yeah. So how do you help people, and how does how does that then monetize it for you? Yeah. So I think the key thing is that a lot of people don't know as as much as they might think they do with it. So um, if you sit down and look at someone's website. Um, I'm pretty confident that if I looked at um, your, your average person's website that I could find out within about 20 minutes um, several ways that they're wasting money, whether it's through Google adverts um, and they could make some changes to the budgeting and, and the adverts. Um, there's so many people who um, don't have good website landing pages. So making sure that You've got forms on it on pages where people or yeah businesses could buy from you, um, yeah, and just I think it's just educating really um, people on a subject which I feel that I'm strong at. So um, Would, yeah, and do you then go and manage it for them and come up with a strategy, or how, or do you teach them how to use it? Which way? What yeah. is your service? So it is um, managing it. So, yeah, at, at the moment, I mean, I, I would potentially like to do more of the coaching side at some point. But, um, yeah, at, at the moment, it's managing. So wh- whether it's attracting more visitors to your website, I could help um, and people that I work with can help with um, doing Google adverts, uh, Facebook adverts, LinkedIn, but there's also um, the blogging side of it and article writing as well, which um, is really important because for some companies, um, this you don't necessarily have to do advertising. And I'm a big believer um, that there's there's a lot of people who are wasting money doing advertising. So um, I've found some stats recently um, about 
the work that I've done for previous clients. And for one client, I saved them about £6,000, nearly £6,000 from doing blogs and articles rather than them advertising. So it's it's a, it just depends on the, the company, really. Mm. Yeah, because what you're saying is not, you know, not every, there's not one size for everybody. You you will adjust what they need based on their needs and their target audience, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I think the, the, the best solution for me is if um, someone comes in for a business or an individual and says, this is my obje- objective, um, I want to do this, and whether it's to drive awareness to a website or to get more leads, that's perfect um, for, for us and um, can help out with that. It's I think it's more when people come and say, oh, I, I need some help, um, and they don't really have a clear idea. Um, I c- we can help with... Um, with cl- with the strategy and coming up with ideas, but mm. I think sometimes people think that you you can work with you know nothing, no support, and it's it is a bit too way. You need to to get the best results. You need um, collaboration with, yeah. with with parties. Now, you will know this as much as I do that I've I've had no end of you know, spammy emails, spammy LinkedIn requests from yeah. all over the world where people claim to be, you know, fantastic at SEO, getting you more mm. leads, getting you more. I mean, the whole they've given the whole digital marketing industry to a degree a bad reputation, you know, because yeah. everybody, everybody says they can do it. You yeah. Know, how... how how do you how are you finding that how are you managing to to stick you know to stand out from all of that yeah i think it it can be difficult but i think it's about doing um, your research really and um uh, the emails and uh, messages which you're talking about a lot of the time they're just you know high quantity emails people sending loads of emails to people they don't even know mm. and i think that's personalization so important today um but also yeah that i've i've worked on from the side of um with i've worked in agencies before and i've worked with agencies so i kind of know how frustrating it is to not know about the results and to not be left in the loop about um things so i try to be as results orientated as possible and as um money orientated in terms of the um for the client so letting them know the potential return that they can get and actually showing them what i'm delivering mm. and i think that because i think the service which i provide is good um i don't have any uh i've, I've with, with certain degree i'm confident with what i can deliver so i don't guarantee that i'm going to make this amount or that amount but i i do like to report back um, and be transparent with people just because it it helps with trust yeah definitely i i, I think that's a, i've certainly been stung uh personally i i've never it's never cost me anything but i have yeah. been on the receiving end of either me recommending somebody that I kind of loosely knew yeah. had never had never worked with but the credentials looked really really good mm. and recommended that person to a potential client who didn't actually end up being a client and I think for this reason uh, and, okay. and this person ended up not doing a very good job for them and uh, it meant I lost a client as well because I recommended them. Although they said they didn't pin it on me, yeah. I still I still recommended the guy. And you know it was a London-based company, and I, I felt awful because the guy had to pay good money and didn't really get yeah. a, get a return on it. So it's you know 
it's definitely not the easiest kind of market to to get into, is it? No, it's not. I think what makes it harder actually is that um, a lot of people don't necessarily know exactly what they want, but also they they might be looking for something slightly different from your packages. So mm. and what you offer. So if you go onto a website, you generally just you buy things on the website whereas with digital marketing and sure it's similar for other things quite often there's people who come to my website and they think oh that's that's good but I want a slight variant of that I don't want that I don't Mm. want that necessarily but I want that so you have to kind of always be adapting your your offering which is difficult yeah absolutely because it is such a massive topic yeah, and, yeah. And at the end of the day, people only have, you know, a small amount of budget that they might be thinking they want to spend, you know, a few hundred pounds, or maybe some people have bigger budgets, a few thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, they that they put aside and say, well, yeah, I mean, some companies, if they're newer companies, they may even get a grant, you know, from somewhere that says, oh, yeah, you can have this grant for your marketing if they're a startup business or something. Yeah, yeah. I think also saw that they said that the the buying price is actually about 20% longer now than it was five years ago. So it takes people, um, well, yeah, 20% longer to actually to, to press the button to say that they're happy to go ahead. Well, online... Yeah, um, I think that's just with um, websites in general. Right. So it's it's basically saying that the, the process is just getting longer, whether it's because of more competition that people yeah. can people can just kind of look online now and see different offerings. But um, yeah, it's just getting uh, trickier, really. Yeah, I, that that's a really interesting point. Twenty percent is actually quite a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I know from myself that if I'm looking to purchase something, there's a mass, a much deeper search that I do now than I ever used to. Yeah. Because yeah. you used to go onto Google, you find the product, and bang, you buy it. Mm-hmm. Um, now there's so many different places where you're trying to compare. You know, of course, people go to Amazon, or Amazon will be the first one to come up. Yeah. But yeah. then. You know, we go on to eBay as well, and then we go on to the actual product website as well if they've got a shop or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, even you probably know this, you heard this as well the other week, Apple have now decided to, you know, sell their products on Amazon, Mm -hmm. which is unheard of. Yeah. yeah. Apple Apple do not want to be part of anybody else's uh ecosystem yeah because they've got their own store they've got their own shops they've got their own everything and now all of a sudden they're part of you know having a shop inside amazon or where you can get i mean it used to be oh, refurbished products perhaps but now you can buy the real product from there and that's because people feel comfortable shopping on amazon you know? yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's sad in a way, but um, that you know you've got such a monopoly. Um, but it's it's just the way it works at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so the question I I wanted to ch- chat with you about is that I yeah. I you know I'm a I'm a bit of an anti Facebook person at <laughs> the moment because for a number of reasons. One, I think Mark Zuckerberg, who owns sixty percent of the shares, he's a liar. Yeah, and the reason I think he's a liar because when he was asked a question by, you know, select committee panel or something in America, when they said, "Aren't you just taking our data and selling it?" he said, "No, right." Yeah, <laughs> but I absolutely know that that is exactly what happens because he would not mm-hmm. have a business model to sell advertising if he didn't have our data because without yeah. without our information. It renders the advertising engine completely useless. You know, you can't yeah. advertise on Facebook unless you have some data to to use. And of course, 
the data is so deep now because of the uh, the amount of information people have given on Facebook. Not yeah. only that, Facebook obviously we had the Cambridge Analytica scandal this year. In addition to that, we had another five hundred million whatever users hack. You know, data stolen. Uh, or 50 million, I can't remember. It doesn't really matter the figures, are just the millions anyway. Yeah. Um, and he, he, and we had all of the, the Russians buying advertising on there, which they totally should have known about because the adverts were bought in using rubles and, and they influence whether it be Brexit or the American elections and now they're influencing or somebody's influencing elections in the Philippines or some other country, yeah. whatever. So my question to you, how can we trust these platforms, you know, to advertise on ourselves even? Yeah, it is, it is a good question. It's um, difficult to answer. Um, I think that the, the world in general is becoming less uh easy to trust mm. and i think um that they're all kind of trying to do different tactics to to build that trust back facebook's obviously losing it um <laughs> quite rapidly mm. um i think maybe um even though instagram's connected to it they're doing better um in terms of growth at the moment mm. um and yeah, to, I'm not sure I could completely answer your question, to be honest, Michael, but um, I think in terms of uh, Facebook, um, they should be focusing probably the, the last year or so, they've probably lost um, their their main thing, their main services, which they're, they were good at. And um, I think it's focused so much on the negative. Yes. Um, they've almost been too, too greedy with monetizing. Uh, I think that's where uh, networks like LinkedIn and Instagram have got um, a bit ahead of them because uh, Instagram do the, the Instagram stories. Yes. And LinkedIn is just a great platform for sharing posts. Um, I think Facebook's just lost that trust through all the, the things that happened last year, but also um that they've lost their way a bit with what they actually offer and uh, they seem to be just obsessed with making money yeah so that's probably where they're losing people yeah i mean the jury's out um i listened to a podcast called Recode decode with cara swisher and she's like a journalist and yeah. she challenges and that they've done um kind of face-to-face -face talks on stage as well with some of these big tech people that she interviews. And she's very, very challenging, you know, of Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg. Yeah. And because they, you know, they haven't been completely truthful. Um, they even, I won't go into all the detail, but they hired certain, you know, um, let's call them spin doctors mm -hmm. to spin certain stories away from Facebook um, yeah. and the, and even claiming that they didn't know that these people were hired by Facebook. So you kind of wonder who are they in control of at the end of the day? Yeah. yeah I mean, definitely. they're still the biggest in the world, you know, don't get me wrong. And when I first started on Facebook, I was one of the very early adopters and I was telling everybody to get on it because I could see the potential of it for the future. Yeah. And um, but in the last year, I've stopped being active in February on it, so I don't go on Facebook. I came off Instagram, uh, I came off WhatsApp, all in protest really against what because they're all owned by Facebook. What they were doing. I'm not yeah. a great advert for your business <laughs> by <laughs> yeah. by mentioning all this, but That's okay. I, I, I think it's highlighting really for you the tough job you've got going forward in a young business trying yeah. to convince people it's a good place here to promote your business so yeah. i think i think what you said and in balance to that i think google i think you know google analytics and google adwords 
regardless of where you advertise, I think you're 100% right that people should mm -hmm. get clued in on that and find out how their website is performing or how they want it to perform and how they want to generate more leads. Yeah. I think, and I've read this on your LinkedIn profile, the other things that you're involved with is things like WordPress and Hootsuite and Buffer. Yeah. I love Buffer. I don't use them so much anymore, but I'm a massive massive fan of buffer i'm a buffer fan yeah not so, only because of the product more about the ethos of the company and their culture mm -hmm. i mean the transparency that they have is incredible i only wish that other company tech companies had their level of transparency yeah and, definitely. and the other company and again i don't know how specialized you are on this um and a bit of advice for you if you want to get specialized in something this is a product I think you should become an expert in and mm -hmm. perhaps become an approved uh, expert because I think you can be. And that okay. is HubSpot. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's listed on your LinkedIn. I, I knew of HubSpot really, really early on, even before you got into digital marketing. Yeah. And I thought I did not trust them at the time. And now... Um, I think they are the best CRM. Uh, there's lots of CRM companies out there, but yeah. they're the best CRM management tool out there, especially with the tools they give you on your website. And I've got all my forms through HubSpot on my website. Okay. And yeah. more importantly, you don't even have to pay for half of it. You know, yeah. most of the services, even having your own CRM on there, it's amazing. I'm sorry to give an advert for HubSpot, but they, no, re they really are amazing. Yeah, um, so I have used it um, before, and um, I've yeah, I've, I agree that um, I've I've not used it the last few years, but I used it when I was working in an agency, mm. um, and I think more than anything, it just helps to to get everything organised and to to motivate you with it because. I found it was really good because it gave you step by step uh, tips for like what you should do on your landing pages. So you might think, oh, that's that's that done now, and you might want to just leave it. But it actually says that you haven't done this yet, yeah, you haven't done that. And I found it really useful. Yeah, um, I I didn't maybe a, a, a later date, Michael, will have to um, go over. Um, the price and things like that, because I, I didn't know that you could get things for free on it. Well, I'm I'm not paying a penny for HubSpot. Okay. And I've got my foot, all my my main contacts in there, my business contacts in there for free in the CRM. Yeah. I, I, I don't use the kind of, I don't use email marketing anymore. I've shied away from that because I think the personal approach is much better. And yeah. you mentioned personalization fairly early on in our discussion. Yeah. And so I have a free account completely. It allows me to put forms on my website. It allows me to track visitors on my website. Um, although the data isn't held for more than like three weeks or so, but that doesn't matter. Um, I, um, I even have a uh, messaging bot on my website as well. So people can message oh, really? me. Yeah, free. It's That's all free. Good. Yeah. Uh, there's so much of it is free. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, we definitely I should I should uh, do a screen share with you in the future and show you what you've got on there I, for small yeah. businesses to, to even start with free. If you're happy with it, then you can kind of go. Yeah. So with your young business, I highly recommend you use it for mm -hmm. your own business because it's you can put actions in there against the your your contacts, and then you get emailed every morning what your actions are for those contacts. Yeah, uh, it's it's brilliant, really, really good. Yeah, it sounds like yeah, I'd be interested to. So th to know. there are there are definitely highlights in the whole digital marketing space, I think, and it's such a minefield of yeah. different options. And I've been testing out things over the years. So what I think, you know, when people hire you um i i think definitely it will be good you know i think that what you said is about having an idea of what you need to achieve and you know what the biggest thing that people don't realize they want to achieve and that is get phone calls right yeah 
not just leads, but ultimately what people want, phone calls from the people they want to do business with. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that mean? Phone calls from people they want to do business with. That is their target ideal customer. And the biggest mistake people make, they don't know who their target ideal customer is. Yeah, 100%, yeah. And, and ultimately, you want to get a phone call from people. And that's the ultimate goal, you know. How you get there, that's the million dollar question. <laughs> and that's what your job's about, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Is get them those phone calls. And if anything, what I've learned, you know, being on the internet and on the digital scene, uh, for years is that ultimately that's what we want as businesses. We want to yeah. get phone calls from people that we like to have as customers, you know, whatever yeah. that target customer is. There's nothing else that you need to do. <laughs> and you're right, because I was thinking of that earlier, actually, about how the people I've been speaking to recently, I have much deeper connections and um, much more um closer to kind of selling products to the to the people who um i've spoken to either on the phone or have met in person it's actually you get lured into thinking that you have a few leads from and a few people have filled in some details but it doesn't always mean much it is the people who you speak to that are going to be your best potential customers i Totally, totally agree with you. I had um, I've got an account with a company called Bark. Yeah, and, I've heard. Uh, yeah, they send you leads, but you pay for them, right? So, yeah. well, you don't pay for the leads. So, providing you've put all your details on, people put, you know, people go to this website and they l reach out to find services. Yeah. And so my my service is animation. So I get you know, got loads of people putting stuff on there. Yeah. Um, I mean, the good thing is they said, well, if you, and in order to contact them, you have to pay, right? Which is fair enough. The website is bringing you all these leads. You might as well pay for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, loads and loads of people I got in touch with and very few of them even bothered to get back to you, mm. right? So they're total strangers. And the conversion was zero for me. So I paid for leads like 63 quid or whatever yeah. to be able to contact them. But there's a money back guarantee. If you don't convert anybody out of those leads, right. then you get your money yeah. back. And I asked for my money back because I none of them converted. You know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so it's much harder to convert digital leads. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the only way to convert anybody is when you speak to them, right? Yeah. Because that's when you have the best opportunity to be able to do it. Yeah, and it's more visual so you can show what what you offer. Um, and, yeah, I just think it's better by all accounts. Like obviously, if you run an e-commerce store, then you might not necessarily have to. But for our sort of roles and, and work, it's it's really important, yeah. On the B2B side is, I agree with, if, you, if you're just selling online, it's a totally different game. Yeah. But I think in, in the main, we're talking about business to business where it's mm -hmm. person to person sales, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's a, it's a different game and people still buy from people at the end of the day and they buy you first before they buy your product. And, yeah. you know, I had a phone call with somebody today. He's going out, getting a few quotes. We had a really good conversation. And part of that, part of even that initial conversation is the important bit, I believe. Yeah, and yeah. I think it's, it's an opportunity, isn't it, yeah, to show, yeah, that you're trustworthy and that you've, you're prepared. Well, I've I've sorry to have kind of hijacked some of our conversation on this whole digital thing. No, it's interesting. Yeah. I, I think it's it was good to just debate it with you a little bit because I'm interested in this area, and I think 
it is a minefield. It is there's a little bit concerning with what's going on. I'm sure that everything is going to be fine. It's ne it's not going to go away. That's for sure. It's only going to continue to grow. Yeah. And you know, with the billions of mobile phones that people have got, two or three mobile phones these days. So there's going to be more mobile phones on the planet compared to people. Yeah. Um. So it is vitally important that we're all clued up. And if we're not clued up, we need to work with people like you to guide us through the myriad of choices we have in order to do this. And that's difficult for anybody. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant work with me is difficult. Or so. it's no, not no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. It's difficult to get your head around it all. And that's why we need people like you to, to help us with it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's... um. It's just constantly changing them, isn't it? So I think they say the things that have happened in the last or business in the last few years has changed more than in the last 50 years or something like that. And, and that might be just for marketing. Yes. But, uh, it's, yeah, it's crazy. And um, it's quite exciting at the same time, just being able to keep up with something which is changing quickly. And how do you keep up then with your education so that you're always at the forefront of it? And how much time are you having to spend on that? Yeah, I try to um, keep up with certain um, influencers and uh, experts that I kind of pinpoint um, as the leaders for certain topics. So I've got people um, who I kind of follow on uh youtube and on an instagram um so for Inst instagram i don't know if you've heard of gary v yes yeah yeah it's quite well known him. he's i think he's just a good uh influencer for just when when you feel like t uh, times are hard and you want to he's just got to plug away at it but um i also follow people who are more related to my field so um neil patel um is someone who's really successfully generated traffic to um to websites and built really successful businesses so yes. he's someone that i follow right um so yeah just keeping on top of people really and uh, obviously podcasts like this are, are good and um listening to other people and uh i think a lot of people talk too much and don't listen so you have to just learn by listening i think brilliant okay <laughs> david is is there something that i haven't asked you that you that you want to get out for people to hear um no i don't think so i think we've covered most things i was just going to say that um on the flip side to the the facebook that um it's in terms of a uh, individual, uh, I can completely see why people are turning away from it. But um, I would say that the pros of Facebook and LinkedIn is that you can find a lot out about audiences without spending a huge amount of money. Yes. So for all their kind of um, downfalls, um, there are st strengths with. Uh, using it as a business proposition mm. um yeah so i guess that's just my my kind of sales pitch for, for using facebook and linkedin brilliant yeah yeah very good where can people find you so share us your digital information i'll, I'll include it in the show notes anyway but be good for you to say it verbally as well yeah, so um, you can f uh, see the website at grandcentraldigital.co.uk. Yeah. Um, and then my personal Twitter accounts, um, David M. Jolly. Yeah. Um, don't use um, social media as much um, for my business at the moment. So uh, it's probably best to yeah, find me on Twitter or LinkedIn. But um, yeah, I think it's um, that my website's kind of the key place where i want people to be visiting hopefully they'll get some good tips from it fantastic thank you david well hopefully yeah. we'll meet again I, I i won't i don't think i'll be able to make the december fiverr event but january maybe if you're going uh i'll see you there yeah, and, definitely. yeah. or maybe other networking events in birmingham if you're going there and yeah. uh, 
Thank you so much for coming on and speak to you soon. Yeah, thanks very much for inviting me. It's been really good to chat and um, yeah, it's been really useful. So thanks very much. My pleasure. Cool. Okay. Cheers. Bye for now. Cheers, Michael. Bye. Staying Alive UK. Share your story. 